come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. Oh, you and you and you and you. Oh, may the Lord bless all of you wonderful, wonderful people who've tuned in to this another in a series of radio ministries that's heard each and every Lord's Day Sunday morning. Are you sick? Are you troubled, disillusioned, and despair? If so, draw near to your radio and let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you now giving you glory and giving you praise and thanking you for this another Sunday that you've blessed us, O oh God. And I pray for those who have tuned in to this radio broadcast that you would touch, heal, and deliver. God, you sit high, you look low, you see, and you know our needs. And I pray that you would supply the needs of your children as they ask you, dear Lord. You see those who are on hospital beds, in their homes, behind prison bars, or even riding along in their automobiles. I pray for them. Pray that you would grant that request in Jesus' name. You said if I ask anything in your name, you would do it. And I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Let me take this opportunity to invite you to worship the Lord somewhere today. And if you don't have a church, I cordially invite you to Worship the Lord with us. That's Holy Temple Church of God in Christ at 572 Clinton Street, a church where Jesus is real and a church where everyone is someone. I have a word for you. I would love to be your pastor if you don't have a church home. Come on and you'll enjoy the Lord with us and you'll leave that it tells somebody that it pays to serve Jesus. I want to talk to you for a few minutes and uh, to give you some encouragement to tell you to be strong in the Lord and to be courageous in God. I want to give to you God's purpose for your life and also a promise that God made to all of his children. And there was a promise that he even made to those who would come to him out of the ark of safety if you just come to God, I want to get to that. I want to talk about uh, Joshua a little bit and Moses from the book of Joshua, the first chapter. And the first six verses, I'm going to be touching on those. Hopefully I will get to enough of this so that you can understand it. And in your spare time, I'd like for you to read that six verses, the first chapter 1 through 6. Joshua's uh, temperament would appear to be sanguine, let me say, uh, confident, yes, confident. Now, psychologically, can I say that? His temperament would appear to be confident. Uh huh. And then, uh, when I think of that, there are four different kinds of personalities that people possess. And every one of us is one of these four different types of personalities. We possess at least one of them. And I wouldn't like to see a person who maybe possess two. <laughs> but I would like to be confident and trustworthy. There are these, are out of these personalities, I mentioned the one, sanguine, which is characterized by spontaneity, optimism and enthusiasm, high energy, mental flexibility, and novelty seeking. And uh, don't forget impulsiveness and curiosity. There are a lot of people who are very curious. Am I right? And then there is another one which is phlegmatic. Phlegmatic, uh -huh. they are nurturing and sympathetic and they are agreeable and emotionally expressive. And then you have the, the caloretic, uh -huh, the choleretic. They have a great deal of courage and like to compete. 
often uh, they like to compete against each other. And the last one is melancholic, uh, which tends to be negative. Oh, I tell you, I, I, I don't like being around negative people. And I tell negative people the Lord would have us to be positive. But however, most people are a unique blend of one of these four different types of personalities uh, where all of the traits are present really to some extent. Uh -huh. I said it in my beginning, in my preliminaries, I wouldn't like to be at least two of them, but we all possess uh, to some of them to some extent. However, some of these traits will be predominant. That's right, Joshua was a sanguine. He was optimistic. It seemed that Joshua was always optimistic when he faced a crisis. You notice the story here as you would read it between Joshua and Moses. You would remember when Moses sent the spies into the promised land to spy out the land, the majority of them came back and said that they could not do it. They could not do it because they were like grasshoppers in the land. And the Bible says Joshua and Caleb spoke up and said they were well able, however, to possess the land. All of the spies saw the same thing. Joshua and Caleb saw it through the eyes of God and knew the victory depended upon God. Mm -hmm. So the other ten spies saw it through the eyes of man. And they knew they were no match, amen, for those giants that they had to face. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, people that are sanguine like Joshua, that's right, confident like Joshua can be a little intimidating. God raises up such people to do his work. He want to be able to confide in us and he looks for us to do our assignment. When he gives us an assignment, God wants us to do it with confidence. Look how God introduced this book to Joshua. When we read uh, what is uh, what Joshua, uh, read this book, we see Joshua and what God is saying to him. He was saying that just because Moses was dead, he didn't mean his plans were dead. That's right, every time a servant of the Lord dies, this is the question on the lips of everyone. But we must not forget that the work of God does not depend on man, it depends on God. When your work is finished, never worry, God has another who's standing in the gallows, who's waiting to make his entrance and continue that great work of God. Of course, that is not to say that man is unimportant. We are very important to God. He uses us while we are alive. He uses us for his benefit and for his glory. It's not any glory, not to any glory of ours, but it's to the glory of God. You are very important to God and God wants to use you to advance his kingdom. That's not to say that even man is insignificant. Oh no, we're very important and very significant to God. It is to say that in the end, the kingdom of God does not ultimately depend on us. Oh no, God can do without us, but if you let him, he, he, you, you can be important to him. You can be significant to him. And God would love to be able to depend on you to do your assignment. I tell you, we just finished a great women's conference at Holy Temple, uh, directed by the supervisor, Valerie Fields, and she had a very beautiful program each night, and we talked about uh, the significance of God in us, how God wanted to use us and, and give us an assignment, and he expected us to carry that assignment out. 
beautiful speakers each night. Oh, I really enjoyed that. But I want you to read Joshua, the first chapter, the second through the third verse of our text, and you will find the purpose of God telling Joshua that Moses was dead and was to tell him that it didn't mean that God's plan was dead. We see here the purpose of God. And then secondly, we see here the promise of God. Well, what is the promise, Pastor? After the death of Moses, the promise to Joshua was that as God had been with Moses, so he would be with Joshua. I want you to read, uh, continue reading through that fifth verse. And these verses of scripture tells us about what the promises of God made and meant to Joshua. And now these are some wonderful promises that God had made to him. And I need to tell you something about these promises. And that is they were made to Joshua only if he obeyed God. Simple as that. So many times people would read the word of God the things of God from the Word of God and take things out of context and apply them to themselves. Well, today we have people doing what they want to do and telling everyone, you know, uh, what they want, uh, what God has told them. You know, when someone comes to me, and I often mention this, that if a person comes and say God said it, well, I don't have anything to say about it except if they give me a scripture telling me what God said. Because that is how God speaks to us. He speaks to us through his word. And if his word didn't say it, I don't have to believe it. And I don't have to believe you when you come and tell me that God told you this and God told you that. But if it's contingent on the word and you can show it to me in the word, then I'll go along with it. How many of you out there listening to me? So God spoke to Joshua uh -huh, and promised him that if he would obey him, God would fulfill these wonderful promises. Just simply obedience. I want you to hold that. I want you to hold that and remember that. I wish I had time to continue this great word of God, but obey God. Listen to his word. Read his word and see what he said. There's some people that haven't read the Bible in its entirety, but I dare you to read it. If you do, you'll obey it, and you'll see some great things, and they're speaking to your heart. God bless you this morning. This is your radio pastor, Lee A. Spite Sr., pastor of Holy Temple Church of God in Christ, located at 572 Clinton Street, downtown Buffalo, New York. Come on out and worship the Lord with us and I, 11 o'clock service. Then at 4.30, the Bethel Church will be with us at 668 Bethel. Yes, we're looking for Minister Cook to bring that great word this morning, uh, this afternoon, rather this evening at 4.30 in the sanctuary of Holy Temple. And until this time, next Sunday morning, I'll see you in church. You come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. You and you and you. And